Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to my channel. Uh, I'm sorry I started off this with uh, snapshots um, of images instead. I actually did this video and I've already prepared to upload it on my YouTube channel, but I realized that um, the camera was not focused well and the video was pretty jumpy at the first minute and that's why I have to redo everything again. So this took a lot of time to <laughs> edit. And um, but I still hope you guys enjoy this video anyway. So I miss my mom's hometown in Malaysia, which is Sarawak, which is the east of Malaysia, and um, it's famous for the great hornbills and the tropical weather. So I want this place to be flowery, to remind me of that tropical weather and the whole Malaysia vibe to it. Now before this, um, I actually painted on a wooden panel which is about 148 centimeters times probably about 86 to 90 centimeters. So this is pretty big. What I did was uh, I did four coats of gesso and I sand it in between. When the gesso is dry, I will sand it and then gesso again and then wait for it to dry and sand it again. So this process took a few days um, to prep. And after that, I uh, painted over the base color, which is uh, Amsterdam's uh, titanium buffy white, because that would be my base color. So I painted that. So there, there are five coats on this um, board, and I've prepped everything before starting starting out. So um, so this yeah, this piece takes a really <laughs> really long time to finish. So as you can see, I pour paint at specific areas only because I don't want to flood this surface with too much paint. If you do that, the whole thing will be ruined by by um, the tension, um, the surface tension. And so because of that, I created my own techniques, which is the detail pour, where you only pour paints at specific areas where you need them only. Otherwise, if the, the paints are mixed too much, you get, you get murky and, you know, it's going to spoil the whole design and you can't have you can create details with it. So because of that, I just pour paints where I need the paints to be. And after that, I just pour on the sides um, so that the paints can run a little bit, but not too much. So this is called detail pour. And then later on, you, you get to learn another te technique, which is um, stitch pour, which I'll explain later. That technique you use because if you can't finish this painting in a day, um, then you know you can always continue your pour the next day so these are two techniques that i've created and i hope you guys can learn a thing or two from it if you're new to my channel please help to subscribe because by doing so you actually help me to create more videos for you guys and i really want to create more stuff because i still have a lot of things to show you guys so please hit the subscribe button please like the video and please comment because i love to hear from you so from for my second technique, which is a stitch technique, if you are if you are familiarized with my detail pour and you're familiarized with the first part of the detail pour, which is to pour paint paints at specific areas, you can skip this part to to the middle where I'll explain what um stitch technique is all about. Now here comes the fun part. Basically, just uh for the background, I'm just gonna do splatter paints here and there of different colors. Um, but of course, I have image in my mind. Uh, as I said, that I want this to be a tropical, um, piece. So the background, I want it to have a lot of flowers, a lot of leaves. So I've already pre prepared the leaf colors and the flower colors as well. So I'm just going to, to you know, throw the paints around and blow them into shapes as well as to mix the colors together while blowing and I'm going to use the balloon swipe technique to get patterns off the petals and leaves this part I'm going to show you how, to, how I did the beak of the great um, hornbill so the beak color is yellow and reddish and, and I've poured them at the specific area of where I want it to be so that's called detail now I'm going to I also uh, managed to create another technique called the stitch technique. Basically, is pouring the paint on the side of another paint and then slowly stitching them up together, which you'll see later. Um, now, this is um, this is an easier way for you to control your paint so that your paints paints won't flow all over the place. So I'm just going to continue the background here and there by just splattering paint. These are the petal colors and then the greens are the leaf colors. So I'm just going to splat the paints here and there and then use um, the same thing. Blow them out and 
use a balloon swipe to create petals and leaves so this is basically just it for the whole um, video but when you see the end result it's gonna be amazing This is yet again another bird and this is a really close up video of how I did the beak. I've uh, applied colors to where they're supposed to be at the specific area. So this is called detail pour and then later you get to see the stitch technique because I couldn't finish this painting in one day so I have to do it the second day. Now throughout the video, you get to see how the paints run. So they run because it's either the paints are too runny and also they run because there are surface tension that happens. So I love this surface tension because when they drag the paints um, to, you know, to the flow of physics, um, it actually helps to create a natural flow to the 
image that I want to portray out. So they're actually helping me to enhance uh, my paintings. So this is why I love fluid art techniques for detailed pores because you get to see the flow of paints that is naturally created by surface tension and the law of physics basically. <laughs> This is the next day. Uh, I painted this during winter, so the weather is really dry, and um, as you can see, half of the paints are already dried <laughs> just in a day. There, can you see? It's already dried. And also, because my paints are very, really thin, so it dries uh, faster than normal. Now, um, what I'm going to do is for this part, it, uh, I created stitch techniques specifically just for you know a pour that you can't finish on a day and you have to do it the next day so don't worry about it we have a stitch technique now stitch technique is basically just pouring paste uh, on where the parts you have not done and try to blend them together with the ones that you did yesterday so that it looks more natural so this is called a stitch technique now to do stitch technique the first thing is that for the size you have to make sure that you you blend or you flatten the paints down to the, to the size that is not done yet if you don't do that then you have a clump and uh, a bump and people can see that you know it's uh, not done it's half finished but you have to smooth out the edge of um of where you have not done yet and just flatten it out and then you can pour paints over it and then just smooth it out at the edge so this is what i did okay you see i'm doing it again for the sides for the wings and then I'm touching up more paints on it so that it looks like you know it's done on in a day's um, you know in a day's work. Uh, so now can you see it looks really natural. You can't see where I stitch right. So this technique is very useful if you do really really large piece of painting and if you cannot finish the pour on the first day, you can always add more pours on the second day. Um, so this is basically just what stitch technique is. Alright, so fast forward, I'm almost done with this painting. Um, this is the end result. Look, it is really beautiful, isn't it? Now I slowed down this video so they can see the details properly. Look at the beak, the eyes, the horns above the head, and look at the body where the greens and yellows are. Those cells are naturally produced by just paints and water. Now if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe by doing so you help me to produce more videos for you. And thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys learned a thing or two and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!